if we're not going to privatize the NHS, then I need to take acting classes. <laughs> I'm going to show up there just... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I need to put your name in the system. <laughs> and you walk out of time and say, thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Welcome back, listeners. First episode of the year of Haya Podcast. And uh, producer Matt is here. We are back in my studio in London. So good to be back. So, right? yeah, so comforting to be back in the normal room. Nigel's mm -hmm. actually done a spring clean in here, so there's like loads of space. Mm -hmm. This is luxury living right now. So clean. It's just I just Marie kondo the whole studio. <laughs> yeah. All the shit that doesn't bring me joy anymore. Next thing you know, I'm going to throw Matt out. Because <laughs> Matt... <laughs> that doesn't bring me joy. He brings me problems. <laughs> but last episode, we talked about uh, me getting Matt a gift. So today... I have a gift for you, Matt. A Christmas present. Oh, no. Right? No. What? No. You, you, just you wait. Oh, no. Listeners, <laughs> I got Matt a present. Hold on. Are you ready for Holy this? Holy shit. I know what this is going to be. What is it going to be? Is it the wand? Oh, it's fucking massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. Open it on camera, Matt. Right. We're going to keep this in the podcast, guys. <laughs> we'll <Yes>. see. <laughs> we are keeping this in the podcast. It's for your happiness, Matt. Oh, what could it be? <laughs> what could it be? The magic, oh, magic no. something? Yes, yes. Oh, it's rechargeable. <laughs> yes. Of course it's rechargeable. What? You think you just use it once and you throw it out? No, but I didn't know if it was batteries. It's a magic wand, everybody. Yes. For those, the audio listeners, Nigel has bought me a sex toy for Christmas. A Hitachi magic wand. We talked about this, didn't we? We did. I remember saying I don't oh, want one. <laughs> You didn't say that. I did. No, you said you said like what's wrong with one orgasm? So that you don't want one, but you need one. Yeah. Someone who says what's wrong with one orgasm, you need one. Post with it. Post with it. It's, it's in case we need a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you gonna use it tonight, Matt? Oh my god! I'm just reading all the little like slug lines. Re read it. Read it. Your flexible friend, legendary strength. We don't need legendary strength. <laughs> By the way, this is the, the adapter because it's a uh, US product. So that's the, I got you an adapter too. Okay. See how thoughtful I am, people. I get my producer, the sex toy, and <laughs> the plug adapter from US to UK and the transformer is included too. Oh my God. But this is going to be good. Open it. Take the thing out. Uh, I don't want to appear ungrateful, but... I'm, what do you I'm mean? very uncomfortable right now. Why? Are you un <laughs> Why? We talked about this. British people, we don't talk about sex. In I'm the not same British. Way. This is not a British podcast. <laughs> Go back to your culture and fashion thing. I got it engraved too, so we can't give it away to Did people. Did you actually get it engraved? No, <laughs> Can you imagine? We got Matt and Gemma <laughs> engraved into the magic wand. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, it's huge. Hawaii wow. girl said you needed one too, didn't she? Jesus. Yes. Christ. Look at this. Show it to the camera, man. Oh Show it to the camera. <laughs> oh, go to my jumper. Yeah. <laughs> Wear this oh. hoodie and use it on Gemma. Gemma's Matty, producer, yeah. Matt's wife. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? You like it? Well, we'll bring it to dinner and we'll see what Gemma thinks. Yes. Well, let's see if it's charged. Oh, no, it's not charged. You should charge it first. Then we can, during dinner, we can just use it. Give thank it you it. very much. And thank you to everybody who commented that Nigel should get me one. So thanks, guys. There we go. It's going to be good. Our next podcast, I want a review from you, <laughs> Matt. Okay? I want you to tell me what Gemma thought, what yeah. you thought, how it improved back. your sex life. <laughs> Okay, or or you know your your back back pain. It can be used for like re oh, regular massages too. Yeah, that's how oh, strong so it, has... it is. That's how powerful <laughs> it is. It can be used for your for back pain. Yeah, back pain and pussy. That's what it's <laughs> this is for. But don't use it on your back. You know, use it on the proper place people use this on. Okay? I'm gonna have such good posture next time you see me. <sighs> <sighs> no. All right, let's charge it. Let's charge this. Oh, you can you can kind of see it. <laughs> you kind of see it. <laughs> so, listeners, we're gonna get a report, a detailed report from Matt next week. Oh, by the way, we're going down to two two uh, episode every two weeks because we talked about this. I realized if I do an episode every every week, there's not much for me to talk about. My week mm. is just like mostly editing videos. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to do the Uncle Roger main channel videos like two or three a month, and then this one every two weeks. 
that's a good cadence for me, so I can still live life. Yeah, I realize I I don't want to work as hard as an American, but I don't want to be as lazy as a British person. So this is my this is my cadence. <laughs> this is my cadence. Yeah, it's a sweet spot. They work too much over there. Yeah, you know, all my American friends they were working between Christmas and New Year. Wow, really? I had an American friend visiting. We we'll covered that in a bit, but she was working in my office. I'm like, do you guys not like you know in Britain? Once they shut the laptop September 22nd, they won't That's open it. it up until January 3rd. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Hey, I got that clip out December 27th. Yeah. So I'm the exception to the rule. You forgot. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> so I think true. Like, hey, man, how's the clip? <laughs> Hour later, oh, it's up. <laughs> yeah, and then you had to pretend to be like, oh, yeah, here it is. As if you didn't forget. <laughs> You know, pretend you already had it ready and not like, oh shit, I forgot to click. Let's do it now. You know? <laughs> no I read you. I read you, man. I, I know what's doing, what you're doing. But, but Americans work too much. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. And also, because I just assumed they were, um, you know, when we went to a couple of trips and mm-hmm. people were saying about their work life balance, I was like, you're just lying, aren't you? You're saying this to like, as a bravado, but no, I think it's genuinely true. They, they just work all the time. Yeah, it's too much. They they work a lot. They make a lot more, and they but they also spend a lot more, so they have to keep working more. Yeah, their vacations are insane, aren't they? When they do take vacations, it's like well, because they only have two weeks a year, yeah. so they they have one thing to splurge on. <laughs> you know, they make all that money. A British person, you guys don't make a lot, but they oh, you also go on five vacations a year. So the vacations you go to are shit. You have to like <laughs> scrimp and save. That's why you go to a youth hostel. It's mostly British people yeah. and Europeans. Europeans are poor too because they're, they're even lazier than British people. Yeah. We'll cover that next time. So because you have you guys don't make a lot here, but you know it's cheaper to live here and it's okay. And then you go on five vacations. Your money is spread too thin. So you go to like shit vacations, you know? <laughs> shit vacations. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like, like Crete. Crete's good. What's wrong with Crete? Crete's are people who can't afford uh, Mykonos <laughs> or Santorini, yeah, or Athens or, or Naxos, okay, or Saint Tropez. Then you go okay. to Crete. You party the Crete people. What, where else you got? Where, where else? Like, where else is a shitty holiday? Lake District. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or guess what? Bournemouth. No. Bournemouth. <laughs> That's the place Matt is going to move to <laughs> soon. A Cornwall, you know, it, it's nice. It's nice, but like it's not Bali nice. It's not Hawaii no. nice. Whereas Americans make a lot of money, and then they only have two weeks to holiday. Yeah, they have to make they the best it. use of it. They go for it. Saint Bart's. Yeah, they go for Hawaii, Bali. You know, f- fancy places. They hire the private jet. <laughs> so what? What? What do you guys think? What do you prefer? You know, I think you you go all out, splurge it for two weeks. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you want to live that lifestyle, Matt, this year? You work a little bit harder. There you can go to like cool holidays. I like lots of little like mini breaks. So lots of like, you know, long weekends, things like that. That, That's good. Yeah, Americans don't know what that is. No. (laughs) (laughs) Mini break. Uh, Mini mini what? (laughs) Mini break is, you know, you know, the hour I take for lunch, sometimes I take an hour and a half. That's my mini break. I got to sit down at the restaurant to eat lunch on a Friday every now and then. Yeah. That's my mini break. So it's January and you are doing dry January. Why? Because we're, we're going to get dinner after this, right? So initially I was like, hey, come record the podcast, man. And I, I'll drive down. But then today a Matt showed up. I was like, I don't want to drive down. I'll get an Uber down because I want to drink over dinner. Yeah. And then Matt surprised me with his, oh, I'm doing dry January. <laughs> Shit. Why? 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 For once, it was you going, let's go and get smashed, mate. And I'm like, I never no. say let's go and get smashed. <laughs> I just want to drink with someone. I don't want to be the only one drinking. Is Gemma doing dry January? Oh, no. no, Gemma's not. You, you guys can have a glass of wine. Okay, good. We're doing a bottle. <laughs> why, why? Why are you doing dry January? Why? Tell us. Because I've been drinking over the festive period, I would say like 13, 14 days drinking every day. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I know, but I yeah. feel like I want to have a break and I want to see, you know, try and reach my full potential. Like what if, full? But what if I didn't drink? Maybe I'd be like transformed into this, like, you know, the absolute 110% Matt. At the moment, I'm probably like 60%. You're going to be disappointed when you don't drink and then you're still <laughs> like this. And you're going to be like, oh shit, the problem is me. 
<laughs> the problem is me. I'll drink even more than <laughs> I am 60% Matt. That's my lifestyle, my personality. 60% is my personality. Yeah. So that's why, because I just felt like, you know, I've never done it properly for a whole month. This time I'm going to do it. I went to a pub yesterday and I had an orange and lemonade. Oh my God. I was God, so proud twats. of my willpower. That was amazing. So you're saying you're going to be sober when you use that magic wand on Gemma. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> that's not good. You're going to be sober and calculating. Yes. You're going to be bored. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Just drink less. What's wrong with drinking less? Yeah, it's something I struggle with. It's it's all or nothing. I I can't sit in the middle. I have to be one extreme or the other. Just just you talk about this in therapy. Uh, you I should. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. What what was wrong with two glasses of wine? I know. I I, right? I agree. I agree with you. I'm, I tell my brain that all the time. It's like we're separate beings. I'm like, look, can we just do like one or two tonight? And it's like, nah. Once I've had two, it's like, well, let's just have six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay up all night. <laughs> okay. Let's see how this goes. Hey, we might be putting out like two or three clips a week when I'm so Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. we'll no see. more forgetting. We'll see. I don't have I don't have high hopes for that. <laughs> you didn't drink that much when you were in America with me. No, no, no. See? That's good. I oh, know. That's fine. <laughs> right? With all the hoes, you didn't drink that much. Right? Oh, the, the brothel. Hose. You were sober at the brothel, remember? New Year, same old brothel stuff. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's not cheating if they're Asian. Oh. That's what I need you to tell Gemma. Okay. It's not cheating if they're Asian because then it's research. Right. You know? So if you meet a nice Asian woman, we'll talk to her. <laughs> that helps you understand me and the perspective of this podcast more. Okay. It's not cheating if they're Asian. I think it's a hard sell. You that's, can help me at dinner. That's my new merch slogan. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna wear on dates. Yeah, you're gonna tell with the white women. <laughs> I'm gonna hook up with all the white moms, the milfs, yeah, or black moms, Asian. whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's not cheating if they're Asian. You know, as I wink at them, <laughs> I wear a shirt saying that. Fuck this MSG hoodie. We are making new. It's not cheating if they're Asian hoodie. Okay. I quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Just, it's also, it also just makes no sense. Like, why doesn't it? <laughs> why doesn't it? We're different. We're different. Okay. You know, it's like a, we are like a different species of people. Oh my God. <laughs> we're different. And I think you need every uh, a woman of every race in your life. You know? Okay. <laughs> because they're all different. You hang out with a white woman if you want to eat vegan meals. Then you hang out with a white woman. You got to do dry January, hang out with a white woman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you want to wear, if you want to watch anime, you can't like who are you gonna watch it with, right? You're gonna find an Asian woman. What if you watch anime with a white woman? <laughs> what if you really like anime and then you date a white woman? Then that that, that's, that that portion of your life that you can't ever share with her. There's a disconnect. See, mm. different women for different occasions. Women are like watches. Oh you need a God. nice dress watch, and you need a skanky watch. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just want a skanky watch. I was going right? to ask if you'd started therapy yet, but I think I've got my answer. Well, I have started therapy. <laughs> have you? My therapist tells me it's normal to want to have sex, Nigel. It's yeah. a normal human life. And I'm oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, therapist. <laughs> this is hypnotherapy too. It's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. In the first hour, we just talk about life. Yep. And then the last half an hour, he just like, tries to hypnotize me. I try to oh. access my subconscious. No, it's not like hip. Hypnotism, no, you know? no, 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 no. He's trying to get, get to it. me to ac access my subconscious. So it's 90 minute sessions as well. Yeah. Oh, that's intense. Yeah. It's long. Yeah. You have yeah. to sit down. I sit down in bed, laptop on stomach now. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because they need you to sit and then your, your head propped up by something, you know. So I use my bed, my bed frame. Oh, amazing. My headboard. Yeah. So I just sit in my bed and do therapy. That sounds great. Like, are you enjoying it? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's one of the few few ones that I want to see her. Uh, I'm, I've been, I saw, I've seen her twice now, and I feel like it's useful. Yeah, good. It's made me very centered and uh, not not super grounded. Yeah, grounded. But but that could be because I'm back home relaxing too. So the burnout's yes. gone. So we'll see. 
We'll see when shit starts back up if she can ground me still. You know, oh when God. shit starts back up tomorrow. I think um, you're going to be on this path now. You're going to start doing like transcendental meditation, oh. listening to the gong. You're going to buy one of those gongs. I'm going to come around like <laughs> those gongs. gongs. <laughs> Listen, just because it's an Asian podcast. No, that's no, no way. That is not We I'm got saying. him, people. We got him. You're working with me the whole time. Why hasn't Nigel bought a gong yet? <laughs> His house is missing a gong. Should I buy? <laughs> Don't, should I tell him? It's part of his interior decor. You're missing a gong. Nigel. You buy me a sex toy. I buy you a gong. Yeah, buy me a gong. <laughs> I dare you to buy me a gong. I'll put it, up, I'll put it as decoration upstairs. It could go in your garden. They're quite big. They're not waterproof oh, gongs. Okay. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Sorry, my gong knowledge is like, it's not good. <laughs> we'll put it in a studio. Put it back here. Yeah. Buy me a gong, man. Where you? Even, where would you even buy a gong? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just someone I follow who has one in the garden and it just looks amazing. Really? Yeah. Who is this person? Are they Asian? Are they white? <laughs> Are they white? He was on Gladiators and now he went. He went on this reality show I watched. That's how I found who him. Who is this person? Uh, James Crossley is his okay. name. Okay. And he's like beef. Okay. And then does this like gong and it looks really delicate, and it's like getting in tune with nature and you focus on the sound. Like, pong, <laughs> annoying all your neighbors. <laughs> pong, and shut the fuck up, James Crossley. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. on a Sunday. Shut up. <laughs> pong. <laughs> and then in the front is like the, the rubbish people, the garbage, garbage truck. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> they are the loudest fucking things. Every yeah. Tuesday. They just don't give a shit. Do they? They come to your neighborhood. You, you know, everybody's awake at seven thirty that day. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. All right. <laughs> the garbage people, man. Yeah, they don't give a shit. They are so <laughs> loud. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Is nuclear war starting <laughs> on the street? <laughs> that's what. That's life in the UK, people. You know, you, you get either you get awakened by the garbage man or the gong neighbor. <laughs> Poom, zzz, beep, beep, watch it, Dave. Poom, poom, That's a symphony. That's br the British White Trash Symphony. <laughs> Poom. <laughs> Dry January, man. That's not good. Have you ever done it? No. Have I you just ever thought about doing it? No. I don't have the problem. <laughs> Although that being said, I did drink a lot in America. I, I felt yeah. there were points of my tour where I felt I needed a drink. Yes. I talk about this with my therapist. And that's not good. No. I think if I kept touring, I'd become an alcoholic. But was that because you needed it to pep you up because you were tired? Rather no, than no. you wanted the drink because... There was no reason. I was just like, sat down, okay, I need a drink. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a compulsion. I okay. drank a lot. That sounds very British. That's how I've been like for uh, a very long time. But I was burnt out. What's your excuse? <laughs> just, what, 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 what's your, my five upbringing. holidays, <laughs> long weekends. What's your excuse? Parents are still together. Yeah. See, what, what, what? <laughs> Married. <laughs> Married, happily. What's your excuse? Tell me. Football every Sunday. This is why what are you drinking for? I'm going dry to see, like, do I even need for drink? Nobody needs a drink. No. Yeah. That's true. But I sit down, I'm like, ugh, I was burnt out. I was just trying to use it to numb myself. Yeah. To, to feel like, to feel like, ugh, I'm trying to claw back my freedom. To feel free again. <laughs> okay. I'm so funny, even in therapy, you know, because I told her about burnout, right? I was yeah. like, um, well, that sounds very conceited. Let's not start with, I feel, I'm so funny, even in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very conceited. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I was talking about burnout. We can't keep that in there. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> I was talking about burnout, right? And I told my therapist that because I think I, I needed, I, always, I drank more because I felt like my life was out of control, you know? Yes. Like um, the, the Life Nation, the company I work with, uh, they're fine. It was my fault because I approved those dates, but I didn't know how hard, much hard work it was going to be. Yeah. So they sent me the dates. I approved it because I forgot. Like, I also do YouTube. I also have like, some projects with like networks and TV and movies, whatever. In, in like in development so I had all these things going on yeah. and the YouTube and the writing and the performing and, and the travel so I felt like my life was very out of control because once you start selling tickets for a date of a show you know you, you have to do the show mm. you can't just cancel it so I felt my life was out of control and then I and I had to specify to my therapist well I, I did choose to do the tour it wasn't like a Britney Spears dad situation <laughs> <No>. okay <laughs> 
And then she laughs at that. That's pretty funny. Right. I think that was pretty funny, you know? <laughs> I said doing a podcast with her. I'm just running some jokes. <laughs> you should have recorded it. Was over Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I'm not allowed to record it, sadly. She just hears this is being recorded. <laughs> yeah. This meeting is being recorded. He's like, hmm. Yeah. I think we need to talk about your narcissistic <laughs> tendencies, Nigel. Why do you feel the need to record our sessions? <laughs> uh, because, you know, sometimes it's funny shit. Content. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Content, bro. <Yeah. laughs> <coughs> now I say funny shit in therapy, I have to remember for the podcast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rather than getting her to smile for the thumbnail at the end, it's like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> smile for me, therapist. <laughs> I wonder if she listened to this. She should. She wants to gain an inner working on my psyche. You don't need to you don't need to hypnotize me. Just listen to the podcast. That's all where all the subconscious shit comes out. Okay, doctor. I don't want to give her a name away. My doctor therapist. I had an American friend visit over the holiday period. Boston friend yeah. came to visit. Uh, we went to do this spa thing because I was like, oh, everything's closed. We've got to do something, right? So we went to, I booked a spa, a little spa thing. It's called Aire, A-I-R-E. It's, they have uh, like spas in London, in, in New York, in Barcelona. Paris, I imagine. Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> They're like ancient Roman bath style. So you go in there, it's in a basement somewhere in Covent Garden. It's very peaceful. And then we booked this spa experience, right? which is pretty cool. First of all, you start with a massage. So I booked like a 90 minute massage. We went into this room and then it's, a, it's like a couple's thing, right? So there are two massage beds and then there was one male masseuse and then one female masseuse. Yeah. And then they will explain the massage to us and then the, uh, the, the guy goes, okay, we are gonna um, go and let you guys change. But you guys, I, I'll be massaging you on this bed and the woman will be massaging you on this bed. I'll leave you guys to choose who you want to be massaged by. Oh, and then when they left, I was like, oh, why are you doing this? You're causing so many arguments among yeah, couples. Yeah. Okay? Because as a guy, of course I want the female masseuse. <laughs> why would you want to be, if you're straight, if you're a straight guy like me, why would you want a guy masseuse? Why? Why? You're well, paying the same money. It's they, not like it's cheaper. They might be better. They might be stronger. That's very sexist. No, you. no, no, no. <laughs> it's technique, Matt. It's technique. <laughs> true. Women masseuse, if they need to get stronger, they can just jump on you anyway. Yeah. Okay. Right. True. So I think if you're pay if I'm paying the same price, if it's a guy masseuse massaging me, I want to pay half price. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just prefer a woman's touch. That's what I like. Right. A massage is supposed to be a sensual experience. But the good thing is she prefers the guy too because she yeah. she's thinking like you. She's like, oh, they're probably stronger and heavier. They can massage me harder. I'm like, so, okay. oh, sexist like me then. Great. That's what? Good. So yeah, yeah. Sexist, sexist yeah. like you. Yes, yeah, yes. Good. Boston friend is We've sexist. We've got something like in you. common. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you should have met her. She's fine. <laughs> so she just, uh, we just chose that. And then to me, it's like, well, you know, I don't mind other guys touching you, you know. Is it's kind of hard to me to to ha date someone who's also wanted by other people. You don't want to date someone who nobody wants to touch. You know what I mean? <laughs> what are you doing? You want someone who other people also want to bang, right? That's my philosophy. Okay. So it's just <laughs> great. What? No, carry on <laughs> by all means. Is it not accurate? Everybody wants this. Okay. Right. You want to date someone who like turns heads a bit, who looks good, and who everyone wants to get. You know, who everyone's like. Oh, she's cute. Right? Why do you want to date an ugly person? <laughs> you want to date like a, like a cabbage looking <laughs> cabbage face? Right? So it, it was good. But I think that causes a lot of arguments among couples. And I have to say, massages now, sadly, uh, let me put it this way. Don't get a happy ending massage because it'll ruin every other massage for you from then on, you know? And the thing is, there are certain places in, this, in the world where they are like legitimate masseuse, uh, like legitimate massage therapists, very, very good at massages, and then just throw it in there. So by the way, you want me to, you know, finish you off? And then you're like, yes. And it, that's, that's not a thing. Best case. <laughs> that's there is. That, it not is when they're legitimate and like amazing at the massage. And then, oh yeah, do you want me to throw it in there? No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, don't pretend. Oh, no. You know? So there's a really good mas yeah. masseuse. And then they're cool. They're very casual about it. If you don't want it, that's fine. You yeah, just finish okay. off the massage. You get to go. But if you want it, then 
That is like the perfect massage. I've only <laughs> had like maybe once in my life. So amazing massages and yeah. then happy ending afterwards. I'm like, oh my God, that you have ruined every massage for me now. Okay. It's by a woman, okay, not by a guy. Right, so. <laughs> Why does that even matter? If a if a guy is gonna give you a happy ending, yeah. right? He better pay me. <laughs> okay. But it's by a female masseuse. Yeah. Okay. So that's like best case scenario. It's ruined every massage for me now. I'm too spoiled. <laughs> They were so good at the massage and then also good at the happy ending. So that that's good. Mm, okay. And then we should do that. And then my the Boston girl was like, oh, I actually would like a happy ending massage sometimes too. Why don't they do that for women? And I went, yeah, because it, you fucking take like 45 minutes. You're going <laughs> to yeah. lose money. Yeah. You have to feel safe with the masseuse. Yeah. You have to emotionally connect with him. How long do you think he has? Yeah. It'll take like three hours. You talk about your childhood <laughs> while he's fingering you. It's, it's too long for guys. Five minutes. Done. Yeah, no matter what, we don't have to bond at all. We just lie there. It's ready. <laughs> for a woman, if, if a, a massage parlor offers happy endings for yeah. women, they'll run out of business. They'll lose money. <laughs> I mean, massage. It's got to go and get the candles out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be the right music, yeah. the right sense. <laughs> it's like a whole body thing. Just rings through know? to the reception. It's like, yeah, clear my afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to feel safe around you. Yeah. You talk about emotions and your fears and your dreams and your star sign. <sighs> so no, that's a terrible business idea. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's why people, women don't get offered happy endings. You know, and then then they make make us out to be like like these gross creatures. We're not gross. We're just easy to please. Mm. Okay, women, if you come easy, if you if you get to come more easily, then you'll get offered the happy ending too, right? For extra money. <laughs> Boston girl was the American friend who was working all throughout the between Christmas and New Year. Wow. Yeah, and I had my little uh, uh, office up there. It was it was good. She had a space to work. She was working on like East East Coast time, right? So. Yep. We are five hours ahead, but I was I was telling her how like British people just shut their laptops on December twenty second and never turn it back on until January third, and she was like, "What? <laughs> Crazy! Wow! <laughs> they work too much. They work too much. Mm. And then the cost of living is so low here compared to America. You know, we we're both oh, in really? New York, right? Oh sure, oh, yeah. yeah even with insane. even with the cost of living crisis in the UK, it's still cheaper. Oh, way cheaper. Yeah, way cheaper. So stop complaining. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's even. I know cost of living is, is hard. It's affecting a lot of people, but it's still a lot cheaper, mm. right? And when when I, I I when she went to the airport, she took uh, she flew out a few days ago. Yeah. Back to Boston, and then she was in the airport. She was like, "Holy shit, Nigel, you're right. The cost of living here is so much cheaper. I just bought like a drink, and I just bought a meal for five pounds. And I was like, wow. "Holy shit, you just discovered the British meal deal. <laughs> Welcome to Britain." <laughs> I hope it was from Sainsbury's. <laughs> I, I, whatever is at the airport, whatever is at Heathrow. Yeah, it's yeah. probably like WH Smith or something. Or Marks and Spencer, Smith. maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean it's a good thing she only discovered the meal deal on the last day yeah. she was here. Because I took her around some nice places. Yep. You know, you go on a date with me, no meal deals, okay? <laughs> yeah. You can be the skankiest hoe. I'll still, you know, bring you to a decent restaurant or like, like a nice bar at least. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but that's for you, not for them. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you don't want to eat that shit. Yeah, I don't want to eat that shit. <laughs> I don't want my skanky hoes to eat like shit food. Mm. You know, you don't want your, your hoes to get diarrhea when you're hooking up. Can you imagine? <laughs> Bring someone home. Hey, girl, you up? She comes over and then she just shits herself. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? So she discovered the meal deal. And that, that's like a shock to people outside yeah. of the UK because of how cheap it is. You have to wonder, what is this sandwich made of? <laughs> Five pounds for a bottle of Coke, a sandwich, and a bag of potato chips. Yep. Five pounds! I have one today before I came here. <laughs> I didn't have time to cook, so I had a meal deal. Let's get delivery or something. Yeah, Uber no, eats it. it Cost a living. Cost a living. Cost a living. <laughs> I just gave you a 10% raise. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. Starting this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and you're saving all this money now not drinking. 
Well, that's true. See? I mean, we're only two days in, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't saved that much yet. Can you start dry January tomorrow? <laughs> so we have a nice bottle of wine tonight. Huh? No. Well, I'm going to order something nice to make Matt jealous uh, tonight at the restaurant. Yeah, as long as we're not splitting it, that's fine. We're going to go to a nice Barolo. <laughs> oh, no. we're, we're going to get you to split it too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's how we'll torture him. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the cost of living, you are totally right. The, like the meal deal thing in America, I went for a sandwich and it was a, a really good sandwich, sure. But it mm -hmm. was like $14. Yep. So I had that and then crisps, what, $2? And then a drink's another $2. So it was like almost $20. Yeah. And you have a That's tip. Insane. Usually they're asking for a tip, tip still. Yeah. And I'm like, but you haven't even done anything. Yeah. Like, I've just ordered and you've given it to me and I'm going away now. You're not waiting on my table or anything. But obviously I did do a tip 20%. I'm like, crazy. Yeah. Here, sure, the real estate in London about the same price as New York. Yeah. If you go central London, yeah, about the same as Manhattan. Uh, or I think a little bit cheaper, around, around the same price, let's say. But everything else is so cheap, man. Yeah. Go to a good restaurant, not even a Michelin star place in New York, but a good restaurant. Uh, I think it was two of us. We ended up spending 400 <laughs> Bottle of wine, like, oh. like seven courses tasting menu, $400 with tip. Here, you, you can like eat like a king and it's barely yeah. like 150, 150 maybe. If you, yeah. yeah, if you really try really hard, maybe 200. <laughs> yeah. You have to try really hard though. <laughs> you have to be pretty excessive to do that. <laughs> yeah, you have to do like aperitif, bottle of wine, <laughs> yeah. and then dessert wine, yeah. right? Michelin star places, sure, it might edge up to like 300 pounds yeah. total for two people. But here, you have to try really hard. Like I eat lot at lots of places, it comes out to like 70 pounds, 80 yeah, pounds. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know? Bottle of wine here, a nice one at a restaurant, 50, 50 pounds. You know, mm. over the, in America, it's at 120 minimum, oh. right? So don't complain if you live here, people. It's good. <laughs> yeah, but it's all relative, isn't it? I think I can retire here, you know? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, just chill in my house, live out the rest of my life. Things are, things are easy here. Nothing changes. There's no growth or development <laughs> in this country. <laughs> it's getting worse. Yeah, I mean, if anything, yes, it is it's getting, getting, getting worse. It's getting a lot yes. worse. <laughs> In Malaysia, here's my perspective. I leave my hometown of Kuala Lumpur. I come here. And every year I go back, there's mm. new shit that makes me very, like, it feels foreign to me. Like, new malls, new buildings, yeah. even more high-rises going up. But then I tour for two months, three months. I come back here. Nothing has changed. <laughs> Shops still don't accept credit cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah, good old England. <laughs> and at first I was like, what the fuck? Can we just progress to the rest of the world? And now I'm like, it's kind of nice. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Quaint. <laughs> Fuck globalization and progress. Yeah. Let's keep my shit the same. You know? People are still driving stick shift. They're just driving <laughs> manual here. Let's keep it all the same. It's, it's yeah. nice and comforting. It's like you're like 20 years behind the rest of the world. It's good. <laughs> Who needs progress? I say this without uh, no, no irony. I really mean it. Progress for what? For what? I remember um, the World Cup in um, Qatar, yeah. all the videos are going around of like what it's like over there. And me and my friends are like, when did we become the third world country? This is crazy. Like, it's incredible over there. Yeah, I Absolutely love this. incredible. I love this third world country. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing my gap year here. I try to help out some poor British people. I'll build some <laughs> schools for you. <laughs> I'll donate some money. Come over here. Oh my God, look at the poverty these people are facing. <laughs> And then you go to you went to Bangkok this year, right? You saw how crazy luxurious yeah. it was. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. <laughs> I have to go back to Clapham tonight. It's gonna be like, you know, those um sponsor someone like a child normally. Oh yeah, it's gonna, really be, a it's gonna be me person. though, yeah. with like my meal deal. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, looking sad. For two pounds a month, <laughs> you can help a child like Matt from Bournemouth get food. People Asians are gonna come here for their gap year. <laughs> You know, when they want to, they're rich kids there. They want to see like the impoverished nations. They will come yeah. to Britain. <laughs> they will go to Bournemouth <laughs> where you're staying. And they'll try to help build you like, like an optician or something. Yeah. Like a doctor's office. <laughs> you know, teachers without borders. <laughs> oh my God. That kind of thing. God's sake. And then there'll be like schools teaching you guys. If you don't work hard, finish your food. Matt from Bournemouth is struggling with his meal deal. He can't even afford it. Finish your food. Right? Yeah. Who needs progress? I like it. Keep it this way. It's good. It's good. 
And then people are like, oh, do you know how unethical it is in Qatar? They built all these st stadiums in four years with slave labor. I'm like, that's how buildings are built <laughs> everywhere. <God>. Okay. <laughs> sure, there's no slave labor here, but do you see any new buildings in London? No. no. <laughs> there's no house. Nobody can afford a house here because it, they're not building new shit. <laughs> because there's no slave labor. That's why you can't afford to live in London. And I like it. Keep it this way. <laughs> I'm a homeowner. Let the price increase. Don't build new shit. Keep it this way. That's why people are against slave labor here. It drives down the cost of their homes. It drives it drives down the, the value of their property. So of course it's easy to be ethical. I am I am against slave labor now too. But I want to move to LA next year. So please get some slave labor in LA to build more buildings. So keep the drive down the property property prices. You know I I'm. I am for slave labor in markets that I don't own real estate in. You know? Oh, Jesus. I am against slave labor. <laughs> no slave labor here in London, please. Yeah. But in LA, please get more slave laborers over there. Let's uh let's take some Ukrainian refugees oh, and slave no. laborize them. You know. <laughs> because Papa Nigel, Daddy Nigel wants to move to LA, you know? Yeah. <laughs> People are so shocked. Like, oh my god, a new building. That, 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 that's how age is progressing. That's what we do. <laughs> that's what it takes for progress, people. A little bit of slave labor for you. Guess what? Not everybody gets to, not everybody gets to enjoy their jobs. Okay. So slave labor. The answer to everything. It also works in both ways where like the COVID hospitals, do you remember in China they were building them and it would be like a day, two days. Yeah. Guess Here, who's guess so who's shit. building those hospitals? <laughs> The Chinese slave laborers, <laughs> right? You think you think people are gonna willingly build a building in one day? <laughs> There's no free will in that. Are you gonna go labor like for twenty hours a day to build something? No, no. you're not gonna do that shit. <laughs> so guess who's gonna do that? The slave laborers. We make it sound like it's a bad thing to I mean, have. It slave is a bad thing. It's not a bad it thing. It's a bad thing. <laughs> Your plumbing, you, you have shitty plumbing in your house. The pipe's leaking. How many days but, did it take for a plumber to show up? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't. I had to do it myself. See? Yeah, yeah. Guess why that is? <laughs> There's no slave labor. I said to Gemma, this is the worst time of year for it to happen because no one's working. Exactly. <laughs> if slave laborers are on call 24 7, they have no free will, no Christmas. Oh. <laughs> That is terrible. I'm, I'm seeing some pros here for slave labor that nobody talks about. At least with the COVID hospital, you're, it's, it's for al almost for the greater good. Like you're helping people. Like the pyramids, obviously, is mm -hmm. you know, disgusting. It's vanity. Like Pyramids? They, they, well, you know, like that was slave labor, wasn't it? Yeah. Pyramids, no, it's aliens. <laughs> is it aliens? <laughs> Are aliens slave labor now too? <laughs> <laughs> was it Aliens. What do you mean? You How are you slaves? saying that straight faced? What do you mean? It's was aliens. It aliens? Is it's saying it if it's like a commonly held belief. <laughs> it is. Is it not? What do you mean? Is it not like some crop circle shit? <laughs> are the pyramids not crop circles too? It's not aliens. Really? I, I mean, I wish it was, so that all of those people wouldn't have died doing it. I like to think they're illegal aliens, you know, <laughs> the undocumented Mexicans who build. Oh my. <laughs> The pyramids. Just make pyramids. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jose. He's the alien. It's Juan and Jose. <laughs> That's the solution. If you build something with slave labor, just say it's aliens. This is what Qatar should have said. Uh, we we don't know. We don't know. We just uh, we just woke up one day and the uh, the stadiums were built, Habibi. <laughs> oh, no. Habibi, we don't know. We don't have nothing to do with this, Habibi. <laughs> It's alien from outer space. They see we toasting World Cup. They come down. They build stadium. <laughs> That's how it works in life, Habibi. You pray to Allah. Allah sends you aliens to build stadiums. Oh and then these God. aliens disappear. They don't stay here. They disappear. <laughs> so bad. Inshallah, the stadium gets built, Habibi. Inshallah. Oh. <laughs> that was staying out of that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, oh, oh. I wish there were slave laborers who were working at the NHS. Okay. Can we just some, can we just import some 
just for the holidays and just for the bank holiday weekends, can we import some slave laborers? Because I had to go to the hospital on cr- Boxing Day. Yeah. Not even Christmas, Boxing Day, 26th of December. I had, um, so the story is I had, I had a little bit of a, a ear blockage. And I think it's just earwax build up. It's happened before in my life, yeah, yeah. but I was <clears throat> on tour. So I couldn't really, I didn't have the tools to do the, the, the spray and the drops to get it out, right? So I just left it like that. And then I think I came back to London. It got worse. It was really blocked. So I tried everything, tried even, you know, not advisable. Don't do this, but I use a metal thing in there because I was, oh I was desperate. I was God. desperate. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Eventually I got it out with the spray and, and, and some olive oil <laughs> because nobody was delivering shit. I tried to buy the eardrops. I thought you were just going to say I tried like, you know, syringing of water, flushing it out. I tried that a lot. Thing? I tried that a lot. Wait. It didn't work. That is, oh, wait. You need gr- to explain the metal thing. It was 24th <laughs> of December where it happened. And I was like, fuck, everything's closed. The dr- no pharmacy is open. The uh, eardrops will only arrive 27th. I can't live like this for three days. Okay. <laughs> so I eventually got it out. But then on the 26th, I started feeling this pain. Um, <laughs> it's probably in the metal. Yeah, thing probably that. that. <laughs> Guys, don't put metal things in any orifices. Yes. Just leave them alone. <laughs> I mean, it depends what they're into. It depends what they're into. Okay. Don't 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 kink shame people. I'm not. <laughs> Some people like to put a spoon up there. Okay. Some people like to put a spoon in the pussy. Mate, that's Sometimes way too you, you know how when your <laughs> eyes are like swollen and puffed up if you haven't slept enough. Sometimes your pussy gets engorged. Your pussy gets swollen. <laughs> what? Take a cold spoon. Get the spoon like or your dick gets swollen. What do you do? Put an ice pack on there. Same thing. I put an icy spoon. <laughs> it's a common skincare thing, okay? But anyways, I had an ear infection. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So I've never had an ear infection before. So I didn't know how serious it was going to be. It mm. was like hurting really bad. I, was, yeah. I, I, could, I had to stop editing. I couldn't even, I was just like, every like wincing from the pain. Did every it few really minutes. affect your hearing? Did it all go like strange? It was blocked? muffled. And, it was muffled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was very yeah. muffled. I've had that. So I drove myself to A&E, what they call like intensive, not intensive. No, A&E, urgent, accident and emergency. Accident and emergencies. They only call it A&E in the UK. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the emergency America, emergency, emergency care. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I signed myself in and I was like, how long is the wait? They said two hours. Wow. Yeah. Two hours. Okay. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm already here. Everything's closed anyway. Yeah. It was 11 p.m. at night. So I sat down, used the vending machine, bought something to eat. And I just <laughs> sat there two hours. Two hours went by. I checked. Two and a half hours went by. Yeah. It was like 1.30 or 2 a.m. in the morning at this point. I talked to the front desk. Uh, so how many people are ahead of me still? It's very nicely. So how many people? I've been here two and a half hours now. How many people are ahead of me? I said, oh, only three more. Only three more than you. I said, okay. Then I went back to sit down. Another hour passed by. It was three in the morning at this point. I went back. Uh, so I've seen more than three people go in already. So how many more before me now? And she said, oh, now it's seven people before you. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, but it's because <laughs> people coming in and they're having heart attacks. No, they're not. I, I was sitting there. <laughs> how do you know? I, there's a door. I, I was looking at the door. Who goes yeah, into the emergency not room? Not all illnesses are. What, what did, so what are you saying? If Nobody was in, bleeding. Yeah, okay. we were all on TikTok. <laughs> Everybody was on TikTok. I was here. They had the phone on on speaker. They so could I have was, been having a stroke while on TikTok. No, <laughs> they were watching the same TikToks as me. There's a trend now. The moms, the milfs dressing up as their daughters. So I hear that song. <laughs> doo, doo, doo. I wish it was a little bit taller. You know, <laughs> that's the song. So I hear that song coming from your your, your phone. I'm like, yeah. it's okay if I see someone bleeding from their, their head, just walking through, limping. Then, okay, you you go ahead before me. You go ahead. Nobody was limping. People are walking around. Yeah, but not all illnesses are visual, are they? Sometimes it's but the inner illness. But mine's important too. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to lose my hearing. At least like, give me some medicine. Or also, or mine is yeah. just like, you just shine a light into my ear. Maybe spray some air. And then I'm good to go. Five minutes. Give me some painkillers. Give me something that reduces the swelling. It felt like it was the inside of my ear. My eardrum was swelling. It felt mm. like that. Okay? So just, mine will take five minutes if it's that easy. 
Right? It doesn't work like that, though. <laughs> Why doesn't it work like that? <laughs> because he- I'm not even asking. I had to get my my Boston friend was nice enough to accompany me. Yeah, that's good. At the emergency room, and that's I had good. I needed to use her to talk to the the receptionist for me because I was in such a bad mood. I was turning into a dick, you know. <laughs> I understand. I'm I'm like privatize the NHS. Uh, privatize it all. No. So when people get shit service, they get closed down. Let the <laughs> free market fuck you up, you fuckers. I almost wanted to say, do you know how much taxes I pay? Oh, Shouldn't God. you like put my put my national insurance in your system no. and rank me based on how much taxes I pay and then just c- tell me. I'm not uh, again, I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm asking to be in the queue. Yeah. And if it's three people before me, and then there's nobody like fucking dying. There's no stretcher or like a <laughs> trolley pushing people who's dying. Yeah. How? how I, and I was nice. I was wait. I waited up for three hours. You said okay. You said two hours to start. Mm. I waited two and a half hours. Three people in front of me, and I waited another hour, and it's seven people in front of me. It's like come on, like what? I'm not asking for special treatment here. Yeah, okay. Okay? It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. It's frustrating. And you're in pain. So and I'm paying that. a lot of taxes to you. Privatize <laughs> it all. That's got nothing to do with it. That's Privatize got nothing it all. to do with it. Rank people based on how much they're willing to pay. Oh my God. Okay? I realize I'm one earache away from turning to Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Rank them all. If you can't afford healthcare, you don't deserve healthcare. It's not a human right. Why can't I be seen by a doctor, you know? Yeah, put my national insurance in. See how much taxes it And pay for all your salaries, people. Oh. I was in pain. I was in pain, okay? I wasn't myself. I would have loved it if you whipped that out. That's the one. Yeah. Like, you'd literally be like Scrooge at Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> people are like, boo. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's what I thought in, in the moment of distress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was cranky. I was grumpy. I mean, you could have gone private if you wanted to. I'm sure there's Nothing private Nothing was open. Aliens. I Googled. Oh, yeah. Nothing was open. It was oh, Boxing no. Day. <laughs> Unless I want to drive like 20 minutes down to central, 15 minutes, 20 minutes down to central London. But at that point, I was already stuck there. I was like, two hours, fine, yeah, I'll wait. Yeah. I was already stuck there for two and a half hours. I ended up just leaving. And going back home, I Did you? T- took the ibuprofen for the pain, slept through it. The next next day, it was slightly better. Oh, man. So you didn't even get seen? <sighs> no, I didn't even get seen. Oh. Yeah. Privatize it all. <laughs> I used to be like, yeah, nurses deserve raises because they do so much good for the world. I used to like paying taxes, you know. <laughs> In the US, nobody likes paying taxes because your the taxes funds like wars and yeah. weapons and stuff. But in the UK, I think you know the taxes fund good things, you know, social housing, yep. social unemployment, services. which I've I've taken like benefits before when COVID first started. I, lo- I was full time comedy, lost all my work, so I've, I I can see it really helps people in need. So I was happy paying the taxes until that day. <laughs> I'm not saying I still want to pay taxes for like social house, social benefit yeah, stuff, but yeah, yeah. Pri- no more NHS. Tax- NHS won't get my taxes anymore. Privatize it all. Okay. <laughs> the NHS is incredible. No, it's not. It is. No. It's only because of Brexit that we've lost. I'm not getting into it. We've lost all those nurses, like 40,000 nurses, apparently. If we privatize it, we can pay them more. We can incentivize <laughs> the free market. The free market <laughs> can incentivize more nurses. So I'm one earache away. Don't next time if you want to turn me into a right wing lunatic, yeah. just give me another ear infection, <laughs> and I'll turn it to yes. <laughs> Fuck social housing. <laughs> Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, homeless people. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's pay them more and stuff. Dude. Yeah. Let's get some Filipinos in. They're the best nurses. What happened to the Filipinos? <laughs> Brexit doesn't affect them. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's I don't the point the answer here? to that question? Can we get some Filipino slave labor? <laughs> you know, I, I, there's an argument about Brexit saying that um, because uh, with with British being part of the EU, a lot of our immigrants are Europeans, mm. right? We don't have control because Europeans can just come in and out. Now we have control of immigration. We can have people from the rest of the world mm. come join us. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Let's get more Asians in. The food will be better. <laughs> Let's get more of my people. <laughs> but I realized they won't want to come to this uh, <laughs> non-progression country. <laughs> That's why it's a good place to retire. Yeah. You know what I mean? You come here in 50 years' time, it's still going to be the same shit. Love it. I'm saying this out of... Uh, genuine you, affection. Uh, genuine affection. It's a yeah. good thing. <laughs> Progress is not always good, people. Right? But let's privatize the NHS. 
What are you for privatization? No, I'm you'll get seen it. quicker. Yeah, but then you you'll pay a little bit. The of money. People who can't afford it, it's not fair that they shouldn't get the same standard of care as everybody else. It's not fair, in yeah. my view. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, oh yeah, that's fair. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Not a very well thought out point on my end. <laughs> but I am sorry you had an ear infection and you were in pain. Yeah. You know, for three you don't hours. deserve that. But you don't know the circumstances of the people who are ahead of you. Because I've been there. I've had something, you know, like um, a contact injury of some sort that I needed to be in hospital. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they say it's going to be half an hour and then it ends up being four hours. And it's like, you can't help people okay. getting ill and coming okay. in. If we're not going to privatize the NHS, then I need to take acting classes. <laughs> I'm going to show up there just... <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I need to put your name in the system. <laughs> and you walk out 10 minutes later, thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Screw privatizing the NHS. Take acting lessons, yeah, guys. As, yeah. <laughs> That's a solution. If you ever find yourself needing to go to the emergency room to A&E, yeah. just channel your inner, inner Shakespeare. And everyone can do it because it's on YouTube for free as well. <laughs> yes. It's the perfect solution. Yes. yes. <laughs> acting lessons are free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name is Nigel. <laughs> 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 Ah, 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 doctor, see you now. Okay, oh, let's go. <laughs> hey, dog, how's it going? Finally, yes, yes. Look at my ear, please. So why were you just just gonna? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, they're just acting. You know what it's like. What if everybody does that? Oh, Ben, you got a problem. <laughs> go to an A and E. Everybody casting just... agents there. <laughs> oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> they're doing fake blood. <laughs> I'm stabbed. They buy the Halloween like stab <laughs> knife thing that comes. Oh, I'm stabbed! And then, nah, I just need some paracetamol, doc. I've got a sore throat. Yeah, I, got a sore throat. <laughs> I got a cough. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we 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 found the solution, guys. <laughs> Don't turn right wing. Just turn into an actor. So, at the, if next time your parents tell you why you're taking theater, it's a useless degree. Tell them. Well. I want to get seen by a doctor. One day, I'm going to have a minor illness <laughs> over Christmas. Yeah. I'm going to have a, have a minor illness. And it would save me so much time if I just knew how to act. So I'll be recording for 15 minutes now. And uh, let's see if the thing is fully charged. huh? Remember, listeners, always charge it before you have to use it. Otherwise, you have to like fuck near the plug socket. <laughs> we talked about this in our yeah. previous episode with Hawaii Girl. Oh! <laughs> wait, wait, what? Why is this? Oh no! Is it not charged? Did it not charge properly? Oh, uh, it turned on for like two seconds and then. We got a little jiggle of it. Yeah, look, got a little jiggle. It's not supposed to be like this, you know? This just. Is this, is this what your sex life is? A little jiggle, <laughs> and then you're done. This is what it's like. I actually have quite a bad back, so it's, You're a, bad back. it's, it's, it's a really good present, actually. Well, it's a good present for Gemma. Gemma won't need you anymore. <laughs> you better use it. You better use it on her, yeah? Well, I will use it, but lower back. <sighs> <laughs> See how ungrateful this producer is. <laughs> I'm not ungrateful. See how ungrateful Matt is. I did say I would rather the monetary value as a no. bonus. Yes, I did You can't say give that. people money. That's the most like, no, that's so cold and just not personable. <laughs> I mean, that is probably the most intimate thing you can give someone. Exactly. It's so thoughtful. It's so thoughtful. Why am I talking holding this? <laughs> I can practice it with like a mic. It's my doing stand up. It feels good holding this in my hand. It feels familiar. Hold it. Take it. Use it. It is, but, it is heavy, isn't it? Yeah. It's good. It has a good weight. <laughs> good weight to it. You know? Can you I charge think, it like how you charge an electric toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> think your dad... What? Wait, no. finish your sentence. <laughs> finish your sentence. I just, I just clocked it. Finish no, your no, sentence. No, think your dad what? What? I think my dad has one for his back. Pain. Really? For, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the back. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure, Matt's dad. All right? You better use it. 
Tune in in two weeks. We're going to find out how Matt is getting on using this on Gemma. Bye.